Oh, I hate Monday mornings. Anyways, it's time for another First Thoughts Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on Afternoon Soak Flan, the newest limited 5 star that was just shown this morning earlier over on YouTube. As with all impressions videos, I'll give you my two cents on the character. Do I think they're good? Where would I play them? What types of equipment and artifacts I'd play them on? All that stuff you've come to expect from me in a First Thoughts and Initial Impressions video. Without any further ado, let's jump right into it and take a look at Afternoon Soap Flan's S3 animation. Ah, what an incredible vacation. I wish it could last forever. An enticing lure will always be reliable. Oh, you really have no tact. So the first half of the skill 3 animation with the fish doesn't do a lot for me. It's cool, I guess, but not really my cup of tea. The wink, though, at the end is pretty cute. Overall, I think I prefer the enhanced basic attack skill, which you'll see later on in the video. Previously in the English dub of Epic 7, Flan was voiced by Kelly Ohanian, who was a VA with relatively no credits to her name before landing the role of Bridget in Guilty Gear Strive. It appears, though, that Flan has been recast. She is now voiced by Ashley Edner, who similarly is an up-and-coming voiceover artist with not too many credits to her name. I'm very curious to see where her career takes her in the future. Moving on to Flan's stats, she is a Fire Ranger of the Gemini Zodiac symbol, which is the second most common Zodiac sign for a Ranger in the game, so she shares a stat line with a lot of characters, including Seaside Bologna, Faithless Lydica, Briar Witch Asaria, Bomb Model Kana, Command Model Laika, and of course, Pirate Captain Flan herself. Taking a look at her stats, she has 1182 attack, 571 defense, 5299 health, 114 speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, 18% starting effect this, no starting effect resistance, and of course the 3% dual attack chance. Imprint for the team is going to be health percentage for the top and bottom slots, and then attack percentage as her self-imprint. In case you're wondering, this translates to ever so slightly above average attack, above average speed, but not by too much, and well above average starting effect this. Everything else in the character's kit, though, is low. As always, before we actually break down how good or bad the character is, first let's go over the entire kit. Starting with the skill 3 in the palm of my hand, you acquire 3 souls upon use, and it has a 4-5 to five turn cooldown depending on Malagora. Attacks a single enemy, decreasing their defense for 2 turns, and increases the combat radius of all allies by 20%. A successful attack always results in a critical hit. Soul burn effect for the cost of 10 souls ignores effect resistance. Skill 2 is a passive, I'm still on vacation. At the start of the first battle, gains 3 focus. Increases the evasion of Flan by 50%, and when her focus is 1 or higher, increases her evasion by an additional 50%. After an ally uses a basic skill, that is your skill 1 in case you do not know, consumes 1 focus to trigger a dual attack, and increases the combat radius of Flan by 15-25%, to 25%, depending on Malagora. Do note that if you use a basic attack skill that guarantees a random dual attack, Afternoon Soak Flan will be prioritized due to this passive. And finally, the basic attack skill, Do Not Disturb. Attacks the enemy with a gun with a 30-40% to 40 chance to stun the target for one turn depending on Malagora. A successful attack always results in a critical hit. When used on the caster's turn, uses It's a Whopper instead of Do Not Disturb. It's a Whopper, attacks all enemies and gains one focus. A successful attack always results in a critical hit. This skill does not trigger a dual attack, because, well, it's AoE, and more importantly, does not trigger a counterattack. Do note that the this skill does not trigger a counterattack portion of the skill only applies to It's a Whopper, and not Do Not Disturb. Now that you know the kit, and you can clearly see how hot this character is, you probably already know what I'm going to say. Or maybe you don't. She's a Cleave character. Damn it, Smilegate. Why? It should have been me, not them. Why is every flaw in a Cleave character? When you guys were previewing episode 3, I remember declaring this character... My episode 3 waifu, she was my girl. Everyone else was drooling over Gundam Girl, aka Landy, but me, I was a flan faithful. Why are you all so mean to me over there? 
Every single flan is a Cleave character. I just want a standard one for once. Anyways, moving on to the character's kit, and to quote friend of the channel, Divine, this is a blow-your-load unit. At least, those are his words. I asked him to clarify that considering her appearance, but he refused to comment. That said, he's not wrong. Assuming you're not fighting Solitary of the Snow or Sea Phantom Paldus, you essentially get three bullets in the chamber with this character. Every time Flan uses a basic attack skill, even the ones that are random, like Conqueror Lilius, Flan will use up one of her focus to get a guaranteed critical strike for big damage, as well as a 40% chance to stun in case she fails to secure a kill. After she uses three dual attacks, she loses evasion from her passive and is essentially out of gas, and you'll have only one focus a cycle from that point on, which severely limits her usage. Ideally, You'll want to set up a team so that Flan is built entirely critical hit damage and attack percentage and each dual attack one shots or two taps any character that she touches. You're going to let the 25% combat readiness from her passive carry her to the front so no need to build speed whatsoever on this character. Once Flan actually gets a turn you have the option to either combat readiness push your entire team with in the palm of my hand or just pick off all the stragglers at one time with it's a whopper. If the enemy isn't dead by the time you use one of those two skills, well, then you've probably lost the match. Gemini Ranger is not exactly known for its staying power, right? If you look at all the Gemini Rangers that we've ever had in this game's lifetime, the only ones that ever really stick around are things like Briar Witch Asaria, which just happens to have immortality in the kit, Seaside Bologna on Lifesteal, which isn't exactly great now, and... Faithless Lydica, and that's largely due to the artifact Guiding Light, which I don't really think you're going to be using Guiding Light on this character, because if you're playing her, you probably have turn 1 locked up, because, well, it's a Cleave character. So what I'm basically trying to get at here is that it is a turn 1 character. Turn 2 players, my turn 2 uh, guys and gals out there, I don't really think that players like us can take much advantage of her, unless you're going to play her alongside of a character like Harseti. And to be honest, I think that Flan plus Harseti is a pretty amazing combo, right? Harseti's basic skill is a defense break, which will trigger Flan's passive, get you a dual attack for huge DPS. Just imagine going S1, defense break a character, pull Flan, kill a character. That is brutal, especially when you consider the fact that because Flan has so much combat readiness in her kit, you're probably going to be building the character at base speed anyway, whether you play her with Harseti or not. Me personally, I would go Destruction Set with a Critical Hit Damage Necklace, Attack Percentage Ring, and Attack Percentage Boots. Just go absolutely sky-high damage and just forsake all other stats. Like 5,000 plus attack, 350 crit damage if we can get it. That is how I would play the character. As for artifact choices, we'll cover that more in a second when we talk about her artifact. But before that, I want to touch on one last thing before we move on. Epic 7's PvE content is primarily dominated by really broken dual attack strategies for some of its most difficult content. It's one of the most powerful and broken things that you could do in this game. It would not surprise me in the slightest that such a powerful dual attacker like Flan might end up showing up somewhere in an optimal hunt composition, maybe Nightmare, Raid, Labyrinth, right? Or even Advent in the future. So even if you don't care about PvP at all, I would still pick this character up because she's limited. If you're new though, I would not pick her up before Midnight Galilius. That unit has proven to be very strong in PvE as well as PvP and has an artifact on her banner that multiple heroes like three or four can actually use. So if you're new and you're trying to decide between Midnight Galilius or Afternoon Soak Flan, the choice should be pretty clear, at least to me, you get Lilius. That said, let's move on now and talk about her artifact, which is Dreamlike Holiday. It increases the critical hit damage of the wearer by 15 to 30%, depending on artifact level. If the caster attacks when it's not their turn, has a 50 to 100% chance, depending on artifact level, to increase the attack of the caster for one turn before attacking. Can only be activated once per turn. To me, this is the slam dunk play artifact for this character. It does everything that I want on Flan. The critical hit damage increase, I believe, can exceed the 350% damage cap. 
because it comes from an artifact and not from something like your equipment or a buff. So the fact that I can already get a damage increase that supersedes a cap is great. On top of that, I get a guaranteed attack buff before I deal on my damage. Uh, hello, right? This is a character I'm only building attack on. This character is going to destroy people with a plus 30 copy of this artifact. Alternatives, if you just don't get the artifact or just don't want to get a plus 31, can be something like Miscon File from the Guilty Gear Club for its defense breaking capabilities. That seems all right. But in general, any generically strong damage increasing artifact, like take your pick, Portrait of the Saviors, Prelude to an Era, A Symbol of Unity, those all seem like they could be playable. I'm also never going to rule out Guiding Light because it's the backbone of the entire Ranger class at this point. Clearly, Smilegate balances all Rangers around Guiding Light. So if you want to play Guiding Light, that could be a fine substitute. But again, this artifact does everything the character wants. It's obviously designed for, I would just play Dream Like Holiday if you have access to it. Overall, though, I think Afternoon Soak Flan is a really, really good Cleave character for those of you that like to play Turn 1. To me personally, I'm not a cleaver, but she doesn't seem as strong as Eternal Wander or Ludwig. That said, I have no doubt that players will be able to develop incredibly strong strategies around her as they've done in the past with heroes like Summertime Asseria, Jacko Valentine, and Fumir. Turn 2 players, I think we could take some advantage of this character with Harseti, and I also think she's pretty usable for us in things like Guild War Offense as well as Arena Offense. I'm also not willing to rule out that possibility again of her having some kind of insane dual attack synergies in PvE. Considering Tristan Wolf is both a cleaver and a PvE expert, I expect him to be head over heels for this character. Well, as much as I can expect him to be head over heels for a character that's not a redhead. That said, I'm still pulling Afternoon Soak Flan because, well, she's super hot. Like, look at her, right? But this is where I want to hear from you. Let me know how you feel about Flan in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.